This is the thing, Swan. Like, we'll, we'll start, and then we don't know if we're actually live, so we got to wait a little bit. No problem. Yeah, yeah no. It's uh, Listen, we're running the highest quality of productions here on my Twitch. We can barely figure out if it's live. Sometimes we believe it's live. It's, it's got to be live. live. It's got to be live. I got to believe Matt, it's live. You do this every week. What? Yeah, know. but remember that week it didn't work. Oh, it's live. Oh, it's live. We're Are live. We? Welcome. I don't see it. Wow, it looks good, dude. Does it? I don't see it. Looks pretty good. It is what live because people in the chat are saying Swanee. Swanee. Beard emotes. Swan, how the hell have you been? Oh, I fuck, man. Right on rock face. Up. Uh, it's just a face shot in your overlay. That's all right, isn't it? Just yeah. showcasing the beard. I'm a lot better now that I've had my beard and my hair cut trimmed, though, because I was looking... Decidedly unkempt. God, before. I would have loved to see you. It, it was bloody awful. That's why you said you couldn't come on like two weeks ago. Uh, it might have been last week. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, it was too, busy, too busy playing H1. I gotta just keep my oh, yeah. beard going. Ah, oh, well, it's great Royal, to have yeah. you. The, the road to royalty for the swan dog. Good to be on. <laughs> it's taking its toll on us, mate, that's for sure. I haven't moved out this seat for about four weeks since I've started playing. <laughs> hey, hey, there's nothing wrong about that. It actually would be a major problem if you were employed, but the fact that you're not makes it It's really fantastic. It's marvelous. It's it. perfect. I like this little overlay. Looks good. Yeah, yeah, Chelsea made it in like 10 minutes. Shout out Chelsea. It's my fiance. Yeah. You guys don't know. Well, Let's that thing up super quick. Quality. But, uh, I think before we get into pools, uh, we can talk a little bit about uh, 2K and Sydney. Uh, Sydney, Mind Freak wins. The uh, Tainted Minds, they get... Tainted Minds wins the winner final. They reverse sweep them. And then Mind yeah. Freak wins two best of fives. Is did that did the... any of you guys watch the winner's final? Nah. No. Like, I, I'd say it was literally like game three, and, and Mind Freak had like ten opportunities to like win, and they just didn't like... It, it almost just seemed like they just didn't care. Like they had, they had like ten sets of kills and just didn't throw the drone in the, the portal. But so they got like, yeah. sounds like they got overconfident. The swing game yeah, went into yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. One yeah of those. That's I just turned it off. I was like, okay, this event's done. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> I I remember when I saw Tainted Minds wins. I went to sleep and I was like, oh, this is it. But like, I mean, Swan, we went down there for Crown. It's like, I feel like those guys on Tainted, like they just know they can't. My, like whatever it is like when it matters they just can't beat mind free i guess but i mean when it's aussies versus aussies i think anything can happen and i think dens must have had a good reason to leave that team because well i don't know it it seems quite illogical looking at it like yeah w why would you leave by far the the most dominant uh australian roster ever to just take a gamble especially when there's only oh. one aussie spot in the world league so he must have had confidence Intended minds, at least, but I think it seemed, it seemed like he had a lot of confidence in himself too, and it, and it's really frustrating from like an outsider looking in because like the first series he had like a one point four eight percent. Yeah, like, think if he was on that team, like <laughs> the tournament would have been like, like think if I, Excited is a really good player, but I mean just thinking about that roster maybe like dens replaces like like a like a buzzo like it, and it creates like some australian super team i i don't know it, it's just kind of kind of crazy to see how they sort of mess that that talent combination if, up if dens is on that mind freak team they could play maybe one 2k before the events and they would have been good like like that yeah. team close yeah. through that region 100 yeah. percent. like and i i guess uh, i mean look there's different ways you could look at it I mean, maybe he's like, oh, well, I can go to Tainted Mines, I can get a higher salary, and then I screw over Mind Freak because they won't be able to get anybody good. Like, maybe that's kind of what he thought. Like, because I know Mind Freak tried to get Zeus when uh, he left. And okay. Zeus, obviously, knowing that Denz is coming to his team, said no. And then, like, I guess they went down the line and Excite was the next guy. I mean, if I was Denz, though, there's just absolutely no way that I'd ever leave that team. Like, for, I mean, whether there's financial incentives or not, like, fair enough. You're getting a higher salary, but you're also potentially sacrificing the bigger picture, which is getting into the CWL. Because I was saying earlier, not only is it important, was that event so important for Stage 1, Sydney, but it's also important for Stage 2, because whoever gets Stage 1 is going to have consistent international competition. Whereas 
their competitors are just going to be sat at home in Australia scrimming the same teams. And that can also have a knock-on effect for the rest of the season for champs. So Dens, based on one decision, might have just royally screwed up his entire year, as bad as it sounds. That oh, and for, for how long the, those guys were teaming together, too, to like just throw that away on kind of a, a risk, a, on a whim, in a sense. Yeah. And now he's going to get punished for it. Like I really don't think there's a way Tatum Mine's going to pass up. Mind Freak of Dallas now, especially with Mind Freak having the pool play sp- or They both have pool play spots, but Tatum Mine's, they're... I don't. Uh, t- they, don't t- they don't have. They don't have a chance. T- 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 they don't have a chance. Uh, they did not have the best pool draw today. Uh, not at all. No, no. Who drew they, those pools, dude? Jeez, d- dude, who, whoever drew those pools, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he was a fabulous <laughs> Italian man in Columbus, Ohio. Mario. <laughs> Mario. <laughs> Mario. They outsourced it to somebody named Mario. Uh, but I and the thing with Dens is like, I can't imagine Mind Freak ever taking him back. Like, with the way they kind of broke up? Like, there's no way they would ever take him back, right? Oh, no way. And especially how Excite, Excite's actually been playing pretty yeah. pretty well from what I've seen at Sydney. And obviously, they went over to Atlanta, although they didn't get the placement. They, they had a good few close games, a good few 3-2s. If they take him back, it's not for Excite. And, and you know, what we've sort of seen in Europe to sort of play against NA, I mean, Swan can touch on it. It's like... Sometimes you're building rosters not for your region. You're building your roster for international competition. Like I, I truly think that an APAC roster needs Dens to compete with NA's finest. Like I, I just like I mean you saw the the individual skill and they have so much confidence in him. I think that's yeah. why he sort of left was I can do this. Like I I can beat Mind Freak. He did it in one series. Uh, yeah. But I, but moving forward, I think they they need Dens to sort of create that. No, Australian super team. It's an interesting point you mentioned, actually, and I do think it's true that international teams are no longer yeah. satisfied with succeeding specifically domestically. And I think that was actually the primary motivation for this whole uh, kind of roster menu we've seen in Europe recently is because none of these teams are satisfied with specifically winning, you know, Orbit, for example. Yeah, yeah they won Gfinity. They won an event pretty convincingly. But yeah, immediately they're wanting to make a change. Yeah, I mean, what kind good of... is it being the best in Europe to a European team right now? I mean, it's not it's, really great. Especially with the quantity of competition that's available internationally, the fact that the majority of events they're attending are now international events. They're not just uh, UK events. You, you know, you're going over this season, you're going over to, over to the US, like, excluding the league, like, what, four or five times for MLG events, for champs, yeah. and then the league, yeah. you're over there, so... The majority of your competition is internationally, and it makes sense that teams are now recognizing that and starting to form their rosters around international success rather than just in the UK or just in their particular yeah. region. And I wonder yeah. if this is the year where we have one team that kind of moves over and actually sticks it out. Like, I mean, if you're like an infused or somebody like that, like you play in stage one, like you may as well just stay and practice even more and kind of play online there and then get ready for stage two. I don't know. I don't know if any teams have that kind of planned I mean, out, but we're talking about that for NA rosters. Like, I, like I, yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I'm sick of like seeing like I can't play online because of my team teammates' internet connection. Like, we're just too like we've had too many years of this. Like, it, it's oh, time to move on. Like, and it's well, it's, it's the a same half a million dollar league. <laughs> yeah. State, well, like, and move. and these teams are making good money now. Yeah, like salary wise, good. like there's no reason not to. But it's uh. it's. I, I wouldn't mind, but it's the same people as well who are consistently publicizing, oh, I want to win, you know, I'll do anything to win. <laughs> yeah. When it comes down to it, you know, if it's making a hard decision to move across the country to sacrifice things and you're not going to do it, then what's the point? When it, You know, it's it's your occupation at the end of the day. It's your profession. Well, you need to make sacrifices. You can't just be satisfied with coming on every night and, you know, blaming whatever, you know, some form of external factor because of online that's affecting your performance you need to actually take some steps to rectify it and you know that pretty well you went to paris last year to play in stage two right yeah mate we could because because we were having such a tough um we were having such a tough time and then we went to anaheim didn't do that well there and i basically flew from anaheim to the uk and the next day i flew from the uk to paris and spent the remainder of season two uh boot camp in there at the millennium offices were you which is you've there? got uh, for the majority of it, yeah, I think Jared came for a few days, but the rest of it, it was just me. Yeah, but you, I mean, you've, 
you've got to do it. If it's your profession, you've got to just take it on the chin. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I think we may see one team do it. Who knows? But uh, let's and go. As soon on. as you see that one team do it, you'd imagine others to follow. There just yeah. has to be one to do it. There has to be yeah. one to commit to it. All right, so let's talk about these pools. Uh, we can obviously start with Pool A. Uh, we talked a little bit about that. Tainted Minds is in this pool. I feel bad for them. This is a rough draw. They get 33 through 40th in Atlanta, so international competition uh, does not seem to be their strength. Uh, Red Reserve, they're in Pool A. Optic Gaming and Envy. Red Reserve is actually super interesting. It's a roster that's just kind of thrown together after all the EU changes. They've been playing pretty well. They got second in the 2K two weeks ago, and then they got first in the most recent 2K. Yeah, I mean... I mean yeah, so I was gonna say Swan. Like Swan's an expert. What do you what do you, what do you think of this roster? Because like, from our perspective, like, are these guys? Is it just sort of a this is the last sort of stand for these guys? Like we got left over, we're gonna make the best of it, or is it sort of like they're really good online? Well, <laughs> af- out of the top six, there were obviously four teams that changed, um, excluding Infused and Fnatic, of course, the only teams out in the top six not to make a change. Red Reserve. I think people probably had the least expectations for them when the roster was immediately formed. Um, but since you know, since then they've came second in in the first two K they played. They've come first in the second two K they played, and they've been doing consistently well in scrims. So it's safe to say that already they've somewhat exceeded expectations, and they haven't even competed together at an event. Obviously, Atlanta, uh, not Atlanta, sorry, Dallas is going to be a massive step up. And it, you know, online isn't that much that accurate when it comes to a team's performance. But I, I think already they've shown that they they're going to be better than everyone had expected. And honestly, they can well they're easily capable of taking top two in the group. But so you think they can beat Envy or Optic? Well, yeah, I I, I mean more, more than likely Envy. But yeah, I hundred percent do. I mean. <laughs> But the way they've been playing, it's not like completely yeah, I mean, out yeah. of the question. I mean, well, it's it, it's just one of those teams, isn't it? it? It's just four people who were thrown together. You just wouldn't expect it. Like even people with a decent amount of knowledge within Europe just wouldn't have expected that combination of players. Like Niles came out of nowhere this year. He's yeah. been pretty good so far, and even the rest of them. Um, but I think it's just one of those teams which can catch, you know, catch everyone off guard. Absolutely. I- I have a bit of a different take on it, I guess. Like, I do think they're good. However, in this group specifically, I think OG and Envy are going to be way too strong here, especially for how important Dallas is to set the precedent going into season one. So when you look at like all the third ish place teams in these in these groups, I feel like Red Reserve is going to be like that third place team in this group. Right. So I, it'd be interesting to see when they do face up a team against a team that's somewhat similar caliber to them. I would probably give the advantage to Red Reserve for how they're playing lately. I just don't think in this group, group, I don't, I don't think Optic and Envy are gonna let it, let them slide through at all. The two I, guys, I, I, I mean, yeah. The big thing to me is just slaying power, right? Like that, like especially when you look at Optic and Envy, like it, it's just two, you know, eight juggernauts on a team. Is is Joe, Shawnee, Nile, yeah. and Urban the four you would put to say, well, I'll outslay these guys? Like. I, it's gonna if if they take one of those series, it's gonna be a grind. Like it's gonna well, be a game. Fun. The the one thing I think I'm actually most interested to watch a Joe and Urban play in this lineup, just from the fact that like I feel like we've always heard like Joe has talent. Same with Urban. Like we just talked to a lot of European players, they like highly rate him, and it's like when I watch him, like oh well, like rated in zero or like kind of like just putting in so much work. It's like. Maybe those guys get out of the way. It's a little bit easier for Joe and Urban to kind of show the talents that they have. True. Yeah, I, I think it's just a case of them being comfortable in that lineup as well. I think perhaps for whatever reason, as the, that Orbit lineup progressed, they, they didn't really get the results internationally. They knew that a change was imminent. They probably all weren't comfortable, so they weren't performing at you know, their maximum capability. Whereas now, as unconventional as that roster is, as much of a kind of strange mesh of players it is, they all seem to be comfortable in that roster. Uh, it's similar to, I guess, Moose with Infused we've seen this season. Because he's co- significantly more comfortable in that team, he's performing on another uh, level. That That's the biggest surprise. For, I mean, when I saw Moose teaming with Teep and uh, Aix on TCM or whatever, I was like, yeah, he's done. I was like, that's it. I mean, even last year, like, he's not very year, good. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, he's, last he's year... He's had some average years. Yeah, Ghost, but this year, really he's been... Year. Ghost, he was incredible. 
This year, yeah. he's just as good. Oh, he's easily to top three in Europe individually at the minute. Yeah. No, I, I would agree with that. And then uh, Envy and Optic, obviously the top two in the group. Uh, these two teams have played in the past. So uh, Paris, Optic 3 0s them, winner bracket round one. Optic 3 0s them in the loser final in Atlanta. And uh, Envy actually won in the winner's round one in Atlanta. 7-3 map count in favor of Optic right now. I just feel like OG's been playing way too good as of late. And I, I honestly, I've been watching a decent amount of scrims. Like, I haven't caught much from Envy, so I, I can't really say whether they've improved since Paris or whether it's kind of regressed. Uh, it, the only thing you can really note right now is Optic Gaming has been able to get good practice because apparently Krim and Karma are having a bunch of internet issues. Other than that, though, if they're going to play a top form again, no, no team has a chance. But, you know, f for this specific matchup, I, it all depends on, you know, you, you guys have this key matchup on here, Formal versus Apathy. Apathy needs to have another godlike performance if they're going to have a chance here. So the first time they met up, Envy was hot. They're on a run in the winter bracket. Envy, or when they played Optic, Optic was cold at the time at Atlanta. So when they've sort of been on the even keel, Optic has just dominated them. So uh, it's going to come down to who's prepared better for this event. Uh, we see, I see a lot more of Optic because they're streaming up more honestly than it than envy is but you know it, it all depends on what time of day that they're playing at i hate the time that of it day. goes down to that it, it does matter though is this well, they have for breakfast yeah is the, did yeah. they get breakfast in the morning yeah because you can see just the the massive difference between the every time they've played yeah um it, it's a good point i mean if you look exclusively at aswc you'd be inclined to say that optic takes it comfortably because their performance at aswc that I mean, they pretty much demolished them on the match that they played. The, the thing Paris to me close. is when when you used to like look at this matchup, like even that like Biops three champs, like they're like you just didn't have trust in like optics search and destroy, and you sort of knew Envy was really good at like uplink and CTF. They were able to take a respawn. This year, it's just different in that like optics S and D is like nearly flawless, and it's it's it, if that's going well for them. It's so hard for any other teams to take a series. I, I don't see like anybody taking two so, hard points away from these guys. Like, it's just so much relies on search and destroy versus optic, and their search and destroy has just been near perfect. Well, when their S and D is on, it's scary, right? Because they're a dominant respawn uh, team. Somebody on Reddit actually posted this stat. This is this is mind blowing to me. So, we basically always talk about how optic gets in trouble early in tournaments, right? Uh, this guy went through a absolute 0273 you're a champion for putting this together uh, he went through every single tournament from advanced warfare to now and looked at the rounds between basically winter bracket round one and grand finals outside of those two optic has a combined record of 31 and one in tournament play during that Pretty good. What, what was it? Yeah, which it's all right, so isn't it? It's a decent record. Excluding right. the grand finals and winners round one, in winners bracket play, Optic is thirty-one and one, with their only loss coming to H two K in the second round of UMG South Carolina. And if they've gotten to the winners finals, this team is undefeated since Advanced Warfare in a winner bracket final. Well, yeah, Same. I mean yeah, when they have trouble, it's usually winners bracket really. round one. It's it's never like winners semis, like or winners finals. It's always like that first round. Like it, just so much relies on that tournament. I mean, you saw Atlanta yep. like they lost first round to Envy, and then I mean they make it all the way back to finals, but I think they just ran out of gas. But yeah. if they get past that first round of winners bracket, momentum's a huge part of Call of Duty in general, in my opinion, as a player, and. When you combine that momentum with talent, that's why they're, they're the best snowball team. When they're rolling, when they're all feeling on point, when they're all contributing an equal amount, that's why you get that 31-1 and one record. What I would like to see what their record is in those winner, like their first matches of tournaments or like first yeah. match early in the day. Like uh, I know those are obscure stats, but like I'm sure those are the only ones that they struggle with because that's when they aren't as confident. So it's like purely a confidence thing when they do have it. Good luck, anyway. And that's including the tournaments with Nate shot as well. Anyone who's wondering. Yeah. Right. 
Uh, That's so, a crazy stat. Yeah, oh my God. Uh, it's wild. I mean, it's wild. Uh, pool A, anyone taking anything outside of Optic and Envy? I'm looking at Swan. <laughs> uh, Do it for Europe. Bryce, you'd be proud. First, <laughs> no, I mean, first of all, I, I think Optic comfortably takes first. I um, if Red Reserve are going to be Optic, Bloody hell, they're going to need some performance out of all four of them. Um, but I, I, I don't know. It just depends how Envy plays, I think. Uh, I'm going to dodge the bullet and just not give you a def- definite answer. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> but, I, I mean, Optic first and either Envy or Red Reserve next, You've been I watching guess. a ton of Momo on the desk. It, oh, yeah, I, I'm just going to sit on the fence <laughs> the entire time. Uh, I, no, I'll... I, yeah. Logically yeah, speaking, no, you'd say Optic and Envy. Yeah, yeah, no, logically yeah. speaking, you'd say Optic and Envy. Um, yeah. But I do think, uh, you know, unlike Tyler, I do think Red Reserve are more than capable of beating beating them. Yeah, I, I think if Envy doesn't come out and play lights out, I think Red Reserve can definitely take them. Well, it it depends because it just depends. I think Envy are overdue a really good event, to be honest, especially after ASWC, because they have. it seems as though they have been putting the work in as well. Like, they're always playing eights, they're always scrimming and stuff, but... I don't know. Days. I always get to like quarters or semis. They don't necessarily make it to finals. They're always there. It's it's similar to like the fit like phase. Like they're just always in discussion or in contention, and it's just gonna take you know one good day for them to win a tournament. So with teams like Envy and Phase, I almost throw the 2K results out the window. Like I know that like I never see them in a 2K. Fi- like I don't totally discredit them, but I just never see. I never expect to see them in the final. Like for whatever reason. Yeah. I'm never too worried about it. But uh and then keynote keynote yeah. before we move on is the, the highest seated team from open does move into this pool, so So you're nice. looking at probably somebody like Epsilon or Allegiance. Allegiance. G just depending on all you know D G C depending on all, all that stuff. So we're Jesus. Stuff. So it's so. it's safe to say the tainted minds have had the worst pool look. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> ever. they literally yeah, they but... they could not have had a worse, like oh. ten days. Oh. Like they they went from being the number one seed with a chance to pretty much solidify a spot in pro league. They win the match they need to. <laughs> they lose two best of fives. The Italian man pulls them out of the hat, right into optic gaming. And Mario. Ah, <laughs> oh, that is that's tough. That sucks for them, but who knows? Maybe a miracle happens. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody yeah. seems to. Nobody seems to think that. Alternatively, <laughs> maybe it doesn't. And... I mean, the thing is, is Mind Freak's what fourteen thousand points ahead. So basically, what it's would have to crazy. happen is Mind Freak would have to finish like twenty through twenty fourth, which I think is like two or three thousand each. So you got to think that Tana Minds has to make up twenty six thousand points. <laughs> so they have to place top eight, right? Like they have to place really, really well. I think they would actually probably they would need they would need Mind Freak to bounce out of groups and then lose round one, and they yep. would need yeah, to get to. they would need to get at minimum top twelve. Yep. Yeah. I mean, either way, there needs to be a distinct gap between them and Mind Freak, yeah. and at the moment, especially given the fact that Tainted Minds have a grand total of no international experience so far on this game, it's looking fairly unlikely that they'll be able to. Clinch number one spot before yeah. season one. Uh, and mine and mine freak have the easier group. Yes. Their exactly. Atlanta, yeah, yeah. Their Atlanta performance, Taint of Minds, is not gonna be enough. Um Pool B. This is actually the pool that I am most excited for. Patrick Agreed. Price is in the chat. We right. can talk a little bit about Cloud9 when we get to them, but uh Pool B will be infused, E United, Cloud9, and Mind Freak. This is the one pool. Where if you, if, if any of you guys predicted any combination of these two teams, I wouldn't look at you crazy. I, th- I think, first of all, it's probably worth mentioning, because I've seen a few people on Twitter say that this is significantly the easiest pool. Oh, no. You way. actually said it was the hardest, didn't you, X? I yeah, think you I said it was the yeah. hardest, I don't know, yeah. I, I don't know I what think, people are thinking. <laughs> I think, honestly, it's, it's, it's just because it's not top-heavy. But the distribution right. of talent throughout the yeah. pool, it's... You know, it's not like you've got Optic and Envy at the top. You've it's got the most what, balanced group. Yeah, sure. exactly. You've got four teams from top to bottom who are all capable of beating each other. Right. Like, if I told you that Mind Free came in and beat Fuse like they did at Atlanta, and then they stole a game off of E-United, like, that wouldn't be the craziest thing. Or, like, the 
United, they go undefeated in groups in Atlanta. They bomb out of ESWC. They beat a lot of good teams at Atlanta. They're like the they're the one team I feel like outside of well, if Cloud bet. if Cloud Nine shows up, they would be the safest bet. But they're they're the they're they are the safest bet in this pool. Yeah, uh, I want to yeah. see I want to see E United destroy this group. I, I want to put them at like that elite level so bad in the NA side of things. But if they struggle with the this group, in my opinion, they're not elite. And for how dominant they were at Atlanta, uh, it, it should happen. It really should. I mean, the, the question becomes is, is there sort of, was there a unique play style? You know, whatever it was, are teams just going to start catching on to it? Like, to me, you look at, like, Vegas, look at E6. Like, they had momentum. They had a, a different play style, caught people off guard. You know, then their next event they don't do so well. Is it almost a similar story with United? They did was was Gunless just gunning everyone, or or was it something with their play style? Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I I think they are the safest bet. I mean, they still won a tournament. They beat Splice. They beat Envy. They beat Optic. Like these guys beat the best teams in the world to win an event. So I think they're the safe bet. The number two spot is is sort of the crazy one. Yeah, I think uh, I'm trying to find... Oh, yeah, Gunless tweeted the other day. This is definitely, like, alarming. I've not felt the same in-game since getting back from Atlanta slash Paris, and I don't know why. Hmm. Oh, you don't want to hear that if you're... If you're <laughs> no, you should not tweet that. <laughs> That's yeah, definitely no, you, not good. You keep that to yourself. Yeah, when I... Uh, I think Maven actually brought that up. It was the one, like, tidbit of information that he, like, gave to us today. And I was like, that's definitely doesn't sound like somebody who is an MVP confident in themselves. So, I, I look, they need Gunless to play as good, if not better, than he did at Atlanta. I mean, he was great at Atlanta, 1.11 in respawn, 0.97 in S&D. He needs to be that in some for United to easily take yeah. this group. Infused interests me, and Swan, you know a lot about them. You just played with them in the 2K. So... They're Europe's top placing team the last two events. These are their wins, though, in these events. So Atlanta, they have fifth, sixth. They beat Rise Nation in pool play. They beat STDX, EG, Orbit, 3G, and Splice. So they basically just run through the other teams in Europe, like all teams they're comfortable with. Fourth at ESWC, they beat Supremacy and Luminosity with a fill-in. They beat Fnatic, and they beat Epsilon. Like, none of those wins... Like blow me away. Yeah, I guess that's that's the only kind of universal critique is that, despite the placements, perhaps they haven't had consist the consistent results against North American competition. But yeah. then you could also argue that at the end of the day, they're only beating who's coming up against them in the bracket. Yeah, yeah. you can't really they can't really uh, pick their know, own matches. Like, can't in really which case, yeah, in which case it's it's kind of hard to predict how they're gonna do when they finally do face North American, uh, well, a top-tier North American team in the bracket. But, I, I, you know, I, I do think Infused at the moment are a top-three team in Europe. I, I do I think the... say so, yeah. Question. Yeah, and I think the results from ASWC and Atlanta are more than worthy of how good they are. Something about their play style just works against international competition. Like, when I watch, like, Splice, like, they have a lot of firepower or whatnot. New roster now, we'll talk about them later, but... Like, they never had a play style that just seemed, like, consistent against NA teams. Something Barky B, I don't know what the hell he's doing over there. Every roster he puts together usually always plays well. I'm like, who the hell is he playing with? They come over, they play pretty good. Like, I just don't know. I just don't know where you properly rank this team. Like, if you were to just take all teams globally, like, where do they rank? Like, their placings, like, they deserve to be, like, what? Like, up, like, in the top, like, eight globally? Like, top, like, seven, like, six, seven, like, on placings? But, like... I, th I think people's perception is like somewhat distorted as well because of the fact that unlike, let's take Splice for example, you've got four absolutely amazing household names uh, over the past year, over the past two years, ridiculous players. Whereas Infused, you don't particularly have a sort of a standout superstar. So I, d you know, maybe people just can't yeah. get on board with that team and actually acknowledge that they're as good as they are. But I certainly believe that, despite the fact that, you know, it's not some sort of all-star lineup when there's there's no real flashy player. They just get the job done every time and they seem to be producing consistent results. 
Petey, Petey is definitely a very good player. I don't think many yeah. play, people pay that much attention to Petey when he plays, but he's had a, an amazing start to Infinite Warfare, I think. I the I... a team, too, for me. Like, I want to see them do well off the start of a tournament, like get into the winner's bracket. It always just seems like they're having crazy loser's bracket runs. And, you know, I mean, those are tough. They're, they're tough to, to sort of do every single tournament, so I'd like to see them do well here and, and see what they can do to that bracket. Then, uh, Completely agree. Yeah. Then uh, Cloud9. Jesus, I don't know where the hell we even start with Cloud9. So uh, you look post-Vegas. <laughs> Vegas, they get second. We're like, oh, man. Like, Pat Patrick Price is back. Like, he looked good. Like, it was the first time, really, I can legitimately say I thought he played very good. Atlanta. They lose to Luminosity 3-1, Elevate 3-0, Team 3-G 3-0, the Gosu Crew 3-1. They beat Shane. So that's their one win. Uh, <laughs> they go 5 and 15 in map count. ESWC, they lose to Fnatic. They lose to Elevate. They lose to Enigma 6. They lose to SCDX. They don't beat anybody. They go 4 and 12. That's a combined 9 and 27 in map count over those two events. They get second in the 2K last weekend. What in God's name is going on with Cloud9? Well, I don't know about you, Lob, but I thought immediately following ESWC... We're going to see a roster change. Yeah. Like, I thought that would just be imperative. When you look at that, what I don't know what the hell the record you've just said was, but it, was, it wasn't good, was it? Nine, nine and 27. From, yeah, from the past two events. Like, I'd, but fair play to them, actually, for sticking out, and fair play that they've... Same, obviously, yeah. something's happened, and they've proceeded to get uh, well, second in the Tuka. I think, look, we've talked about it a few times on the show like there was nobody that they were going to get that would instantly upgrade that roster than what they already had i mean they have a pretty good roster like you would take them like up against just about anybody like roster wise it was just figuring it out and i think uh i think this is the first time since probably the middle of call of duty ah uh, no actually Probably the first time since Advanced Warfare champs and probably Black Ops 3 champs that we've seen Aix this dedicated. Like, he got riled up for those two events, AW champs and then Black Ops 3. But, like, you that, could tell he never was really in it, into it. Like, this it, year, like, he's definitely turned around. The thing for me is, is that after Vegas, they, like, Pat, I think, just, like, in, had it in his mind that he wanted to be number one in pro points. So I think he just, like... Just saw that leaderboard, wanted to be number one, and was just playing game battles. You could just tell like their their quality of practice was was down. Um, while all these other pro teams just said, "Screw it, let's just scrim." You know, we'll worry about the points at the event. Like that's that's where we're gonna get most of them, anyways. And I mean, it's it, I think it showed really easily. Obviously, like five and twenty-seven or what, whatever it was, it, it it wasn't good. And and I think that comes from their practice. I think I have a couple points to bring up as well. We brought up like the roster change period, what was going to happen. Cloud9 was the team that was going to spark any sort of roster made it to happen in NA. So I think maybe a player or two on Cloud9 wasn't completely confident in their situation on the team. That's never a good situation to perform well, right? Especially after Paris or, or after Atlanta going into Paris so quickly afterwards. You're like, oh crap. Like all those players have this pressure to play well because they may be the one on the chopping block, right? I think we can guess what two players those would probably be, right? Anyways, <laughs> so they get, they finally have a good showing, but I think it's because they're more confident on their spot as a team. They're realizing that they're, you know, I don't want to say a lock. That's the wrong way to say it, but they're pretty much secure as long as they don't majorly screw up for Pro League. So that's another confidence they're booster. They're in a very good spot, yeah. Right. And then number three, for whatever reason, Aches, Pat, I know you're, hopefully you're in the chat still, he takes the foot off the gas after the first you know, month two of the game. He's always in that top, ah, this game, what would you put him at the first event? Top 10, top 15 in terms of like individual skill? Maybe that's gassing he, it, but uh, he's he he's very some, good he at the beginning. Big games. He had some big games at Vegas. He's up there. and down. My point he, is, he's, <laughs> my point is he's very, very dedicated, dominant, ahead of the curve, beginning month yeah. two, three of the game, then stops. Why? That's a, It's a trend. I team with the guy too. I don't get it. I feel like he's been humbled a little bit. Like, True. I mean, a, a hundred thieves, like, that wasn't good. Yeah, like, it wasn't That good. just wasn't good. I mean, 
I but I mean, like, even go, even Black Ops Three when we were on NB, right? Like, he was amazing, and then, and then he was. He, 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 he was very <laughs> oh, on that team. Not. Well, him and Slasher, him and Slasher are just never gonna work. Sure, you, you, I'm just saying, like, f- screw the situation. Just him on an individual level. That's like a common trait I've seen with Pat, and I'm not really sure why. Yeah, I don't know. It's gotta be a motivation thing. I, it just has to be like, all right, I did it again, I'm bored. Like, I, I don't know what it is. Like, you would think he would, because, you know, he has that sort of rivalry with, like, Krim. It's like, yeah, he always talks about how I'm going to catch up to him. It's like, that should be his motivation. Not, like, doing well at an event and saying, okay, like, I'm back. Um, Knowing Pat, he's probably content beating Optic once a year at Champs, and then that's yeah, just, just, just rocking up to Champs, beating them casually, <laughs> right. and then going home again. Going home, waiting see for you guys the next later. Right. And it, what's, what's, go, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to say what's crazy is, like, the, if you look at the 2K as well, like, they beat Panda, they beat Optic, they beat Envy. Yeah. Like, well, that's great know, wins. I don't get it. Those are huge wins. I mean, you lose to E6, who they, they've sort of been on a, a, a bit of a hot streak in the 2Ks. Sort of known as as an online team a little bit, uh, but I mean those are big wins, a huge confidence booster going into Dallas. Bringing it back to the group now, the pool, Cloud Nine versus Infused. Cloud Nine, I want to hear them absolutely like screaming during that match, full energy, full confidence. Like I'm not saying the rest of the matches in this group aren't going to matter, but I think. Those are the two teams that are, that are going to battle it out to make it out to winners. And I trust a Cloud9 team that has confidence going into winners. I really I, do. I have to imagine, knowing Pat the way you no, know, I do, he saw this pool come out and he was so happy. Oh, yeah, yeah. totally. Like, I think you don't place last, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> I think every team in this pool, though, could probably say the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I think every team in some regard is... Somewhat content with this pool for sure. That's like, uh, hold on, I, I had to bring up the whole teams. We can talk about Mind Freak next, but uh, Tyler, you've been, go, go on. I looked this up real quick. Uh, let's see, at Atlanta, their first group match was, was versus LG, and it was actually a pretty good game. I remember watching it, and I think the fact that they weren't able to take out that big win, Cloud9 had a lot of confidence going in, they thought they were an elite team. I think that really knocked their confidence a bit, especially on the side of Lace and Assault. They're uh, new to the top tier talent level of Call of Duty. So I think when they go up against these top, quote unquote, top teams at the time and they don't get those wins, it might hurt them. And then they go into these later matches and not give as much of an effort. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's like, like, all right, we're like, we're back, we're, we're, we're practice. Then we play a team like Luminosity, I think is a great example because it's like they're always in contention and then you lose that. And then it, it goes back to that, okay, things are wrong. Somebody on this team sucks. Like yep. we should have changed, like sh- like panic mode, just, just completely freaking out. Yeah, but they don't have that dominant team that they're going to go up against in this pool, though. And right. uh, we could talk about Mind Freak first in points in APAC, first at CWL Sydney. They had a sneaky good run at Atlanta, so I want to highlight this. I brought it up right after the event. They play all the way through open, so they play like a million hours. They're not allowed to play against the pros in warm ups, so like they're just playing against. Just whomever is out there. Uh, their losses at Atlanta. Enigma 6, 3-2. Tough game. They take a map off of FaZe. They lose to FaZe 3-1. They lose to Rise Nation 3-2. So realistically, there are two maps, probably three or four rounds of S&D from making it out of pool play they at were, Atlanta. Yeah, one were. of their <laughs> wins, their, the, what, their one win in pool play was against Infuse, which was 3-2. So very tough games from Mind Freak. I think they're not... Like, out of all the teams at the bottom, like, this is one that is definitely not an easy out. I think, unlike Tainted Minds, there's a strong chance that they can make a run. But at the same time, yeah. you know, you, you say, oh, it was just one round, you know, one hard point, one tiny mistake. But isn't that like the story of international competition and European and Australian teams going over so far? Is that yeah. seems to be that case every time. So I, I don't really read too much into the exact map scores and the results because... At the end of the day, if they're consistently falling short, then there's, you know, there's, there's something they need to work on. The big yeah. thing was though was like, like they just seem to get better, like series by series. Like we we talked about it at first, it was like okay, their hard point versus their national competition is atrocious. Then by like game three on the uh, in their pool, they were like 
winning or, or making them very close. So I think as long as they sort of didn't go back into their like APAC ways, you know, the past few weeks, because that does happen is they right. do. They had to win the past event in Sydney. Yeah. Um, they always talk about how it's just so much different coming over here and playing. So I, I think they have to just get to the pro lounge, mm -hmm. right? Like get there Thursday, Friday, play against these teams, just adjust quickly. And I, I mean, I agree. Like, I, I think this is a team where th they're able to like almost sneak a second place, like similar to like Team 3G at, at Atlanta. Like, who knows what could happen? To so, be honest, if I was going to say, if I was them, I'd, I'd have been going out early. I, don't, I mean, yep. I don't know if they are, but I'd, I'd have been going out early and boot camping or something because like a lot goal. of the time, a lot of the time, I would say in a like an event, uh, events close together would be a benefit for a team like Mind Freak, but the fact that they were playing against just APAC region competition, I, it's I know they won the event, it's going to be a confidence boost, they're pretty much a lock for Season 1, but th they can't be used to that play style, and yeah, exactly what Swan said, they should have been out and here as soon as possible, getting used to it, so they're ready for it, rather than warming up to the NA play style in the, in the groups. It's something that benefits them this year as opposed to something like last year as a format. Uh, I don't have the exact number. I believe I remember it off the top of my head, but I believe Mind Freak on LAN last year played 39 maps. I think they played 39 alone at Atlanta. I'd have to check that, but that's, just like that, getting that, that much yeah. LAN practice, yeah. like... Yeah. Well, it's it's invaluable. You, like you can, it's just impossible to kind of replicate that tournament environment unless you're all sat next to each other, boot camping or whatever it is. And I, I think they're in a similar. I can kind of relate to that situation because it's similar to Europe quite a while ago when it was only you know one or two teams in contention internationally, and we'd practice amongst ourselves. And then there was that huge gulf between those two European teams and the North American region. Whereas now Europe sort of. I guess we've caught up a bit and we're on a level playing field with America. But Australia, it's still, you know, what, one or two or three teams consistently scrimming against each other. You're just not going to improve at the same rate if it's, you know, if it's not against the best teams in the world. Yeah, I mean, you still want to be the best team in your region, right? Like, that's that's sort of the thing. And, and you have to adjust to the players you're playing at that time. You still want to win. So, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. Like, mind free to, hey, they have to put in as much practice as they, as they can when they get here. All right. Let's go around, give predictions. We'll start with you, TP. Who are the teams that make out, make it out of Pool B? Yeah. Who's making out with? No, who? There's nobody making out <laughs> Pool B. I'm biased, obviously. Oh, e United Cloud Nine. Why? E United's better than all the other teams, okay. and I think Cloud Nine is finally realizing that this is going to be their team for a while. And they need to figure out quickly. I don't think their issues were talent-wise. I think it was them being hot-headed, egotistical, and immature. Swan? Oh, my next, mate. Let me go last. Everyone oh, else yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, let yeah, me yeah. Let me hear what everyone no. else has got to say. I, I, you sort of said there's no clear-cut favor, Matt. I think there is. I think it is United. Like, I, I think they just get out. Um, second, to me, I, I think I'm going to go with Infused. Uh, I like this roster a lot. Um, they always just seem to be in contention. They compete with everybody. Uh, I think if it goes to like a few map fives in this pool, I think they go towards the views. I'm going to go with E United and Cloud9. I think Cloud9 makes it out of pools. I think this is unlike... Okay, so I actually think it's beneficial for Cloud9 that they have a better pool than something with weaker teams because... They actually have to focus, and they know these matches are important, and they know they're against good teams. I gotta believe they show up for those. If they do get upset in pools, and they don't make it out, I kind of want to say mine for you guys a chance. I kind of want to say they yeah. have a chance to make it out. They've already beaten, well, when you look at past history, they've already beaten Infused, and... Logically, if I say Cloud9 gets upset by anybody, it would be Mind Freak, and then that would be good enough. I I think I think Infuse and Mind Freak both have the talent to do it. I think Cloud9 though just I think they figure it out. Yeah. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's let's go let's go E United and 
unlike you, though, the first thing I will say is I don't think it's that clear cut at the top. I don't yeah. think it's that going to be that clear cut at all. I think there's a strong possibility of either Cloud Nine or Infused, possibly Mind Freak or someone taking the you know the top spot from a United. Um, it definitely could happen in this. That point. throws that would throw the group completely out of it. United plays like they did at spot. ESWC. Yes, not the top spot, but I think United's you know, safe to say they're just going to get out of groups. So, yeah, I, I, they yeah. might not win the group. Like you're 100 percent correct, but I think the one point, say. the one point I want to say is a lot of United's big wins at Atlanta, they started super slow in series. I think if they do that again here, they're not going to be like they had superstar performances from multiple players to bounce back in a lot of those series at Atlanta. I don't think that's going to happen again. It's hard to do. So, I, I, to be honest, I like Swan's point. I'm still going to have them number one because I think they're the best team. You kind of have to say it logically right now. But if they start slow in a lot of those series, they got to be careful. Yeah, so I'll say I'll say them and Infused, I think. Uh, but that again, that's like no discredit to Cloud9, and that's perhaps a hint of European bias coming in there. Uh, because I, I think Cloud9 are easily capable of winning the group. Easily, especially given, you know, number one, their two, their recent form in the two K, the fact that they seem to have resolved a few lingering issues from the previous events. Um, so I'm hoping that they start they start on a different page than they left off from the last event, and it's you know the the old Cloud Nine back. And Joe, correct me if I'm wrong. The number two seed out of Open would fall into this. Yeah, and this is one of those things, right? Where like this is where you could see if if one or two. This is where you could see like Epsilon slip into this, and that's where things get like really <laughs> interesting. Epsilon ended up here. That is who the hell knows what that happens. Yeah. Um. So it could be super interesting. This week I'll, I'll have this season and everything, but still, this could be one of those pools, just depending on on results where Epsilon. I can just I I just feel like it is gonna be them. I don't know why. Like I I feel like they're just gonna slide into this pool. Yeah, that is uh, that is definitely the pool that I'm looking forward to watching the most. Pool C, Elevate, Fnatic, Phase, and Luminosity. Uh, Elevate and Fnatic, they played each other, and this is actually huge in terms of pro points in Europe. Uh, battling out for fourth and fifth place, there's a 3K difference roughly between these two teams. Uh, Elevate with a new roster, they have Raided replacing Shawnee, so it'll be uh, Raided, Raidy, Watson, and Zed. Uh, Fnatic uh, not involved in the EU roster mania, and they were actually in groups together at ESWC where Fnatic took the group 3-0, and they beat Elevate 3-2, and uh, that's when Fnatic placed 7th, 8th. Uh, I think we look at these two European teams, Swanee, you know them the best. What has worked for Fnatic thus far? Uh, perseverance, I guess, would be the key point, in that they've stuck it out and i think they were under no illusions especially tom at the very start of the inception when they first got together as a team they were under no, no illusions that it was a project you know it wasn't go to your first event and pro produce results i guess it, it, it's it was a gradual thing and that's obviously what we've seen is we've seen consistent improvement as they've gone on um huge too that's huge yeah absolutely i mean they've gone from you know not particularly being on everyone's radar to being comfortably one of the best teams, well, arguably one of the best teams in the region um, and a team proven to be able to compete internationally. Obviously, at ASWC, they pulled off some ridiculous results. Uh, courtesy of Wuskins, I think, primarily just becoming more comfortable in the team, free, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it's always going to happen when you, when you get players like that is... They're either going to embrace it or it's just not going to go as well. And thankfully, with Tom's leadership, I think they've all kind of embraced their role Dude, within I, the team. And I think Tommy setting the setting the tone with their other guys has been so huge. Like you were talking about, like letting them know, like it's a project, like that, like, no, it's not going to, they play bad. He's not just going to go like chuck them to the side and pick up somebody else. Like, I think that's made this team... What yeah, is, I, I mean, for I've thought for sure, like when we were talking EU roster changes a few weeks ago, like Tommy's sort of resurgence this year, I thought for sure he he was just gonna think about it. like you know I'm I'm sure he's gotten offers, uh, but I, I thought for sure he was gonna be one of those players just to sort of maybe go back to his old Swan, way. Swan Swan's been hogging his assault rifle for the last few years. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, 
Honestly, yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't even call it a resurgence, Joe. Like, I think Tom was equally as good at the last game. Yeah. I would say yeah, he's, yeah, he is easily a top five player on this game. Yeah. But it's just the fact that it's perhaps showcased slightly more. It's given what, the it's fact the flash, that, right? Like, like when I think of like old school Tommy, like it was like clutch plays, flashy, and, and I, I guess maybe just because of competition, he, he still he still pulled. I don't know. He still pulled that off last year, but it's just I think it's yeah. because who he's surrounded by. Now yeah. that he's he's got his own sort of three younger up and coming players to kind of mold yeah. into the team that he wants, it can then showcase him as an individual better, if that makes sense. Provides him a platform, I guess, to play better rather than when he's surrounded by the likes of Dylan and Jerd, who, you know, there's only so many kills on the map, I guess, and there's only so many clutch plays to be made on the map. Whereas in the, he's very much in the limelight, I guess, in this Fnatic roster. But I, just, I, that's, I would say that he's. Sorry, make one. It's it's nice not teaming with the quote unquote superstars. Like it, he's probably in a very comfortable posi- comfortable position when they're practicing. They're still, you know bouncing ideas off of each other there's a level of respect right what i'm sure you you both can agree with that when you play with certain players that are so set in their ways and people have been gassing them up for so many years they're not open to anything yeah. and it sucks you can't get better Once you're people just start stuck reading you're reddit and twitter it's just right ugh. you're stuck at that ceiling and i think it's just refreshing it. yeah i think it's refreshing for him as well like when you've got, you know, I've been, te- we've been teaming for God knows how long, and it's kind of the same regurgitation of, you know, five or six players throughout yeah. the years. Whereas now it's a completely fresh start for him, different game, taken on by Fnatic, his own team. You know, it, I think it's it's kind of revived, perhaps revived his enjoyment, I guess, because I know for me when you're stuck in the same rut, I guess, of team with the same people, you know, as good as that team may be, perhaps it's it provides a little bit of an extra spark to have that project to work on yeah. and to approach things from a different mentality than being expected to immediately win every event yeah. you attend. I yeah. guess it's the fun in building and I'm it. Sure, I'm sure there's stuff he's actually learned from them. Like, yeah, there's absolutely. definitely, like, a play style that they've had, that they've used, that's been successful against, like, you know, you guys, when you guys are teaming together. That Tommy probably went in and was like, okay, like, I want to do this. And they were like, well, we've seen you guys do that. Like, it didn't really work that great. What if we tried this? Like, I think there's definitely, like, a new... I, I think you kind of hit it right where it was, Swan. Like, he seems just more, like, re-energized. Like, it's a fresh start kind of thing. Like, he's been playing lights out. Yeah, and I was just going to touch on the fact that he he went out and, and started teaming with new players. Because we've seen that. We see, we see that in NA all the time. Like seen that for years there's countless examples of where players just sort of don't get away from their click and then you know a year or two later they have no options they're you know they're they're not even considered pros anymore so that, that is something that's hard to do it is something that's hard to do because it's just something you're so used to who do i want to play with like even today like i'm thinking who do i want to play with if i had to make a cod team i'd say like Big TJ Cap and Rambo, you know, like that's just what I like. Yeah, uh, you guys so, would be crawling on the map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like that's it's just like that comfortability, and, and it's good that he was able to step outside of it. And what's crazy think- is like more teams have hit with like players, like picking up players from kind of like I don't want to say nowhere, but like I mean this fanatic roster wor- has worked. Looking back in the past, uh, you know, when Octane went from uh, Justice like up into like the top ranks, like clearly worked out uh enable like went from like playing you no know, all the way up to phase like for aw champs like that worked out like more times yeah. than not these newer players work out i mean enable was playing with tipsy like mochilla yeah. like burns like yeah. they, like it was just like he he knew what he had to do um so yeah it, it it's it's an awesome story i think like that, i just want to elaborate on it quickly that's like a really important point to bring up joe is people sometimes get stuck in their comfort zones within their social circles i guess playing I, we need to move beyond that now it's got to a stage now where it's people's occupation it's a profession you need to be prioritizing your profession rather than teaming with people who okay you might be friends with you might get on with them better it's not about that it's about the team which is going to deliver the better results if that means sacking off your best friend to improve your game, then so be it. You need to do that. 
because at the end of the day, it you know, it's your job. You if should, my job was it's, competing, it's not, I would throw my best yeah, friend down a river. Exactly. It's it's not about who you're friends with. You know, it's not about who your best mate is or who you have a good laugh with in scrims. It's about <laughs> who's going to provide results. Well, well, the, I, I think the hardest thing about the whole thing, I, and I know we're going a bit too far with this, this should be another topic for a different time, but it's just that... that we could talk you, days about this. Yeah, I mean, it's just that you've seen results. Like, you've won championships with these people, so it's like you always want to go back to them. Like, it's, it's just what it is. Like, you have seen success, and you want it to come back, but yeah, another another time we can discuss that more. teams don't like uh, okay I, i'm just ending it when you team with somebody and it doesn't work going back six months later is not going to make it work it's probably not going to work yet again like i, I don't yeah. know if that's some kind of shocking revelation that if it doesn't work the first time probably it doesn't work especially the time, especially when all the people have screwed each other over at some point or another it's like hard to get that same trust oh, back. Yeah. let's move on yeah it does not work uh elevate we can talk about them a little bit uh rated replaces shawnee uh goes to team with reedy watson said uh, this is I, a pretty tough before, group for them. I want, I want to hear your thoughts on that, Swan, because do you think Shawnee was the player to drop on that team or or what? Because I thought Shawnee was was pretty consistent throughout the year. I thought he was individually like performing pretty well. I th I, first of all, I'll say that it wasn't immediately a case of Sean being kind of the scapegoat or anything like that, or him actually being dropped. It was just... I guess it was kind of just... The unfortunate circumstance materialized after Josh decided to leave Splice, and then that that just created kind of a whole Spiral, chain, yeah. chain, yeah, chain of events. And unfortunately, for whatever reason, Shawnee was the guy to depart from Elevate, and you know, obviously that rod, the Red Reserve, and then Elevate formed. But before, I would have said that either of these teams. As they stand, they probably weren't anyone's first choice, to be honest. I, I yeah. think they're just a product of kind of a messy situation. Makes sense. But yeah. it's people making the most of it, making the best of it. In Red Reserve's case, they've obviously proven that already that they've exceeded expectations. Elevate, I do expect them actually to do really well at this event. Um, I've just got a feeling, you know, Say Watson gets a few scoops of G Fuel down his neck. He he starts shouting a bit. You know they start getting a bit loud. They make I love a run. I, he's yeah, crazy, I can. He's crazy as hell. If if you think you've got Watson, Reedy, rated, three of potentially yeah. the most vocal guys ever. Like if they can just you know what I mean build on that momentum, get a bit of hype going. I, I can see yeah, them I'll, doing pretty well. I'll never remember the. I'll never forget the first time I met Watson. It was like before G Finity Swan. I think you were there and he was so drunk. That he was telling me how he normally hates Americans, but he liked me. I spoke to him for maybe two minutes. I was like, all right, all right. I saw him the Perfect. next day, and he looked like hell. I don't know how the hell this guy got out of bed and played. Uh, they don't need that Watson at Dallas. They need to be better than that. I, th I think but confidence as well, though. D d even though they've been slightly disappointing in the lead-up to the event in the 2 kids, they're not going to care about that. No, because when it comes to the event, it's a fresh lit. I mean, you've got... Reese, who's obviously coming off the back of last year, second at the biggest event in Call of Duty history. Um, the other three in their own rights, they've all proven to be successful players thus far on this game. And they're all supremely confident, especially those three I mentioned, Reese, uh, Reedy and Watson, in their own ability. Yeah, I think this is going to be a very good team in Search and Destroy. The only thing I worry about them is the response. Like, they're relying so much on Watson and Zed. To be good in those game modes that, uh, it, you know, against teams like FaZe and Luminosia might not be enough. Uh, FaZe, they've been great against everybody. They've struggled against Optic. Zumo was an absolute monster in Atlanta. 1.18 in Respawn. That's good for second overall. And then uh, top 20 in S&D overall with a 1.10. I think the thing with FaZe is, like, I, I don't even care. Like, I know they're going to pretty much beat everybody else. It's like, if they get against Optic, like, why is it not working for them anymore? got to be confidence i mean like I, I just think like in advanced warfare and, and even the the first time they played this year it was just sort of like all right we know what we have to do we're like we're gonna beat them and then that first time you lose it's kind of like uh sh shit like and, th and that especially on the other side because you gotta think optics like we can't beat these guys like we just can't do it like, i don't know what the issue is like the matchups don't work this fine it's as soon as you do that 
that like that's that's it like that especially if you sort of win multiple series in a row it, that just helps so much for me it's clay it's yeah. all clay 100 percent clay i'm not saying he's doing particularly bad but compared to formal that's the largest difference that it ever has been between these two lineups in terms of how good those players are on an individual level. So well, if Clay can get somewhat back to that level he was where he can, he is competing with Formal, because Formal's on another level right now. I think they're going to go head to head. It's all about Clay getting in a rhythm, go, getting that positive KD. And I think that just on its own, if Clay's uh, uh, in a good spot in his own mind, he will get the other players so, to the level that. Uh, so from what I've seen from Phase recently is that they've switched enable off of using the NV4. He's going to be running the K bar most of the time, and then now okay. you're going to have Clayster running the NV4. So they sw- they've been switching a lot. Like they do that, that often thing. throughout the years. Yeah, like, I thought that was yeah. already thing. <laughs> no, no, they actually oh. it was the other way around. But uh, Swan, I guess you can kind of talk a little bit about that AR player your entire life since birth. Like, you know, have you used the NV4 when you've been playing on this game? Like, is it a little bit harder to use in, like, a slower situation? Like, how does it play, and how do you think it could help Clay? I don't know. I honestly, uh, despite being recognized as one of the slowest AR players to ever grace the game, I actually <laughs> prefer the I prefer the K-Bar, I think. Yeah? I just feel like, yeah, I just feel like in a lot of situations, well, number one, I've heard it's better on LAN as well than online. Uh, and number two, I just feel like in a lot of situations, it just gives you a bit more utility, I guess, rather than if someone's sli- like if you're sliding at someone up close with an MV4, chances are they've got any other gun that, you know, you're not you're really going to win yeah. that gunfight. Whereas with a K bar, I guess it gives you a bit more mobility. And, you know, especially if you look at maps like Scorch and things like on a lot of the hills, it's close range engagements. So I think you can easily get away with running four K bars, but. The MV4 in certain situations, it is, it's it's a necessity on, you know, you're going to have at least one per team, whether it's, you know, on the majority of breakout, holding down the long lines of sight and things. But I I don't know, I guess it's personal preference. And when you watch Formal, like comparing him to Formal, like Formal uses the K-Bar a lot. Like it's not like yeah. he's not using it, he, but you see him switch to it, like switch to MV4 on certain hills. Those long sight lines, you... You'll see him constantly switch, but yeah, I, I think the K bar just because of the sort of situations. It's almost like if you have the NV4, you feel like you can't push into the hill, which you sort of seem like okay, I'm not helping my team as much as I could be if I had a K bar, right? Like it's that constant decision, and I, I think with Clay too, like like he he's all about like I don't want to do, I, I don't want to feel like uh, I'm not helping the team. Like he wants to help the team out as yeah. much as possible, but I think we can all agree it's like. I don't think you have to do that. Like, just kill. Like, just just kill. Like, you have yep. attach and Zuma, enable. Like, they'll all get the, the 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 hard work done. Just just kill these guys, man. Just open up the lanes for them. I think if anyone's going to be successful, with the MV4, it's going to be Clay as well because yeah. agreed. A lot, a positioning is obviously imperative with it. You need to put yourself in slightly smart situations rather than just relying on the close range engagements. And Clay has obviously been renowned for his positioning with an AR throughout the years. Then uh, the final team in this group is going to be Luminosity. And this is a team that I know I like a lot. Now, they don't have the best CSWC, but they're playing with Panda as a fill-in. Uh, they played Elevate in groups uh, in Atlanta. Luminosity went undefeated in groups 4-0. They beat Elevate 3-1. I think Luminosity phase, I think it'll be a very close match. I think with the other drawings in the group, though... It could give Luminosity some trouble. They are not the best search and destroy team. Fnatic, dominant in S and D at ESWC. Elevate a very difficult, a very difficult team to deal with in search and destroy. But their respawn game modes Luminosity have just been so good. At least in my opinion, I'd be, it'd be hard to imagine them lose to either of those teams. I think, I think they have a realistic chance to if, the, if Phase is playing kind of like men's and men's, like to take Phase. Definitely could. I, I'm I'm inter- interested to see how LG bounces back after playing a tournament without Saints. Like, uh, how much they learned about how, what he brings to the table compared to playing with a fill-in, right? And what gaps were missing. So it could, you know, benefit them, or they could have been slacking off and not really getting the practice that they needed. Whereas all these other teams had their full roster at, at an event, and like not getting a, a full tournament of practice is worlds of difference. So I'm interested to see how they bounce back. However, in this pool, 
should be comfortable one too. Honestly, should be anyway. Thing with luminosity to me is I you never feel like they they're getting better. You That's know? true. Like you yeah. never feel like all right, this is different this time. Their search and destroy is on point. Like they had like I, I think maybe it was Atlanta, but they were perfect throughout. But then I think mean, bracket it, it it got a little tough for them. But it just yeah. seems like they're never like improving and they're beating the teams that like are that used to beat them in the past like i i don't know i just i like this team a lot like and, and there's so much talent on it but they never seem to improve and it's the same thing as the rise roster last year right like they they got like second in stage one and, and they won the first few events but it, after that stage one it was like they never got better they just plateaued super hard yeah I know they have been practicing a ton going into this event. Uh, I've been trying to convince Octane to play a little bit more World of Warcraft with me. He can't because he's been practicing. <laughs> so that's that's the information I have there. Uh, Perfect. This pool, I don't think it's as open as the previous one. I think it really comes down to three teams. I think it's FaZe, Luminosity, and Fnatic. I think those, for me, are the three realistic teams uh, and a combination of those that come out. Yeah, I I just don't, I don't I don't see the two European teams beating Luminosity or FaZe. Uh, the thing that worries me most is just like respawns and FaZe is known to be a pretty strong S and D team, so I, I think FaZe gets out no worry. If there's gonna be a team that like takes second, I I, I think it can be Elevate or Fnatic, but I I think FaZe is a lock in at number one and then. LG should be locked for number two. Yeah, I, I have FaZe at number one in the pool, and I have Luminosity at number two. Tyler, who do you have? FaZe LG for sure. In that order? Yep. Swan? Um, <laughs> yeah, probably the same. <laughs> Here we but go. I, again, I'd say this. I'd say number one, FaZe 100%. I'd put them in similar category to Optic in their pool, as in there's, I think... There's no feasible chance of anyone taking that number one spot off them, assuming that they play as good as they have been playing. Um, I, I can't really comment on LG because I haven't seen much of them. I know ESWC was obviously a disappointment, but not really worth touching on because they had a pickup at that event. Um, but again, I, I do think that the, the two international teams in that pool are more than capable of of clinching a top two spot. Um so I'm going to say a phase, and then I'm undecided on number two. A phase and undecided. So I'm going to do a Momo. <laughs> <laughs> Momo, there you go. Momo, uh, Momo, we, he, we could, you know, hold his salary or check to let, wait till he picks, and he still wouldn't pick. Uh, pool D, we'll move on there. Pool D is Panda, Rise, Splice, and Enigma Six. One, oh, this is one of the most random assort- groups of teams of just yeah. put on paper ever. Uh. Panda ninth and pro points make or break event for them. Uh, a lot of familiar faces for them in this pool. So Re- Panda has played against Rise Nation at Atlanta. Panda won that game. Uh, they played against Splice at Atlanta. They lost. And at ESWC, they had an awful go. They lost to Luminosity, Extravagant EU. The only team they beat was TK. Kind of gives you an idea where TK's at in this game. Uh, Rise Nation... Uh, Tough rematches for them in this group as well. ESWC, they go undefeated in groups. They beat Enigma 6, and they beat Splice. So they've already been in groups with this team. Uh, Atlanta, they lost to Panda, like I said, and they beat Enigma 6. So Rise Nation has two wins on land against Enigma 6 thus far at the previous two events. So that bodes well for them in this matchup. Uh, Splice, new roster. uh, Don't really kind of have much to talk about them just because it's a completely new team. Uh, an Enigma 6, they win the most recent 2K, second in the previous one. Uh, I think, for me, I want to start this off with Splice. Such a big roster move. I mean, I feel like they're going to lose a little bit of leadership here, Swan. I feel like Josh brought a lot in just terms of communication and leadership to this team that I don't know. I, I think, no, I think Zero is, like, world class, like, you know, top player in Europe. But I think they're going to lose a little bit of communication and leadership in this move. And, and hold on, before Swan gets on this, I I know I saw a lot of the Splice players sort of like like sort of bitching about like, well, oh, what do you think we don't communicate? Blah blah blah. I, I think what we're sort of referring to is okay. If 
if it's map five, like round eleven, like who's gonna be making the shot? Like who's making that call? Because to me, that's not clear. Like in the past, I think it is Josh. Um, do I think they're gonna be okay communication wise? Like yes, but I I, I think the sort of shot calling leadership thing to me uh, that that point actually irks me a little bit you can talk all you want but it's got to be good call outs it's got to be yeah. leadership it's got to be decisive like decisive you can talk all you want i've been on so many teams that talk 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 Go on, tyler oh, keep going that, yeah <laughs> keep going tyler <laughs> a little bit it's like <laughs> I, I, up. <laughs> i've seen like i hate going at players individually but like i team with jerd he's he his communication's off Sometimes he goes on tilt. I don't know about the other players, but it, it's definitely an issue, and it's not something that players should brush off so easily. Is my I point. Mad Cat's the same way. Like Mad Cat's got as, yeah, yeah. He's been known to be pretty difficult to team with at times. Um, the other two, I'm I'm not so sure about, but that's sort of where that comes in. If any of the splice players are watching, because I know they're very angry about the show today, and us saying that. Yeah, I hope they can prove us wrong. I'm just saying, like, yeah. it, it's a very crucial part of a team. The first thing I'll mention is the leadership point, and I completely agree that conventionally you'd expect Josh to be the guy to call things 5-5 previously in that team, but I don't think he was. I think because he just wasn't comfortable in that team and he knew it for a while, You know, I'm sure it was in his head for a while that he wasn't that comfortable, he wanted to leave. Perhaps he didn't have the confidence that they respected him as much or whatever as a leader, but I don't think Josh was the leader in that team that everyone expected him to be. I think he's... It, it's kind of universally agreed now that the roster changes benefited both Josh and Splice. Because Splice, oh. because first off, for Josh, he now has a team that, you know, he wants to team with, he's I guess. He's clear cut leader of that team. And, yeah, we'll, yeah we'll exactly. Him. Yeah. Exactly. And I think he's going to flourish more as a leader in, the Epsilon, in Epsilon than he did in Splice. But even in Splice, I don't think, and he'll, t he'll probably tell you himself, he wasn't that much of a leader in that roster just because of, I don't know, whether it's internal yeah. issues or what. It just wasn't. His usual, his usual self, I guess. Even though he is, granted, he is vocal, his communication's there, but there's a distinct difference between having the communication and being I mean, a leader, if, as Tyler said. If that's the case, I kind of, I definitely change my opinion on the Splice team. Like, if they're... And then who, who, who is it then, Swan? Is it, is it Dylan? Like, is it I, well, that, I haven't got a clue, to be honest. I mean, you... <laughs> I don't, yeah. That, it's, 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 I, I, yeah. I think... I'd like, if it was me personally, but again, this is just my humble opinion, I'd like it to be Dylan. I just because I think Dylan's matured a hell of a lot over the years, and he's grown now into more of an all-rounder, as in every, you know, he's got all the attributes, rather than just being that all-star player. And he's at an age now where he's, he's acknowledging, I guess, the other important attributes, as yeah, opposed I to just sitting there killing everything, which... <laughs> Yeah, which he's is pretty damn good at killing things. Yeah, I, I, I think all vets sort of hit that point, right? It's like, okay, now, like, let's it's consistency. Let's just, let, let, let's just bans kill everyone and 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 Jared just do his thing. Like, I'll, I'll do what needs to be done. But yeah, I mean, Dylan yeah. very much was so the kid who just wanted to shoot everybody and not care about anything else. But don't don't get me wrong. I think he's still yeah. easily a top five player in Europe. It's just. If someone's going to adopt that mentality in game, I guess naturally you'd say it was him. I mean, just because Trey and Ben are slightly younger, I guess, but you never know. I, I, I've never really played with played with Trey and Ben that much, so I don't know how vocal they are in game. Perhaps one of them might adopt it. Yeah, you know, so... Perhaps one of them just might, might naturally assume the role. Jerd, um, you know, just because, I mean, even... J I don't know about from when you team with him, Tyler, but I, I think Jerd's comms have improved significantly over the years to the okay. point where I, I wouldn't even have that much from team with him on Black Ops 3. I wouldn't even have an issue with him. Like, See, like, it, from, from this is my experience, and that team was shit, so don't get me wrong. Like, it's probably a, not a valid opinion completely, but when things are going great, everything's fine and dandy. When things started going bad, he got pretty quiet. So I don't know if it was the same, if the same trend continues or not. Swizz said in chat that that Bans ben actually called a calls. lot, yeah. Which is Bans interesting. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair. I mean, look, if they have somebody who's already been the leader and you replace Josh with Zero, I'm very okay with that move. Yeah. <laughs> this is zero. Zero. It's true. Zero. Zero is oh, very good. Yeah. That like, that changes because from the outside looking in, like it's easy to see like how everyone would assume Josh is the caller, the leader. 
When you go to listen ins, you can't even hear anybody else. I mean, he's the only he's just screaming at the top of his lungs. But granted, it's how he's been with every team. If Bance or Mad Cat literally if any of the other three were the one calling, making decisions, whatnot, you add zero onto that roster, they're they're sick. Yeah, I mean it makes sense with Ben being the leader as well because with Trey and the team now, at least I, I think there's going to be a, a level of mutual respect there, an acknowledgement, you know, and, and it's it's leadership's about a lot more than specifically communication. I guess it's about you know your teammates have to trust you as a leader as well. You know, it's it, not just calling out the most and calling the shots. There has to be an element of trust involved, and I think unlike with Josh, Josh wasn't particularly happy in that team, and towards the end the cracks started to show. And it became evident. So that there was that there. Whereas now, it's kind of a solid four. You've got the exact team you want. So whoever's leading it, there's going to be no issues, I don't think. And conversely, on the other side of things, I think it's a lot better off for Josh as well. Now that he's got oh, yeah. a different three that he's wanted a team with. But I think that change specifically for both parties has worked out well. Yeah. And, and the thing for me is, right, if you're spliced, like... This is, I, I mean, you guys could disagree, but to me, this is the most talented, like, European, in terms of raw skill, like, European roster that we've probably seen. Without a doubt. Yep, uh, definitely. Like, so, they, to me, there's there's going to be some pressure. Like, you you don't want to fail. You, you're going to make whatever has to work, work. Um, because this roster is pretty ridiculous in terms of talent. And, and like, speaking, speaking on these guys as well, Looking at these four players, we know they're going to kill everything. That's not what we're worried about at all. So when we get into this nitpicky mode that probably like makes certain players angry, but it's like, what happens when you're not killing everything? We expect you to kill all the stuff all the time with this these four players, right? We're talking about the, the situations in game where everything's slowed down and you make, they need to make a slow, strategical call. Who's going to step up? Are they going to have that overall confidence in each other? Uh, it's a power move. These guys, with this move, talent-wise, should win the group fairly easily, in my opinion. Oh, oh. But I, but, yeah, I have but, them winning the group, too. But I don't think they will. Oh, I, I have them winning the group. I think they'll get I th- second. I, th- I think they win this group. I don't think... I think Rise knows how to play against people better than them. Does that make sense? Do they beat them... I mean, look at look at Splice's wins at ESWC. They beat E United. They three zero Envy. They beat Fnatic. Their loss is to Rise Nation three two. Like they can definitely like with this roster, they can definitely take respawns off of Rise. True. I'm just saying that like that this Rise lineup. I mean, they win a lot of three twos in their history. <laughs> they do. They just they just are all. They just they get through. I don't know. Oh, I mean those. To be clear, those are the two teams I have making out of this group. Spoiler yeah, totally. But, I mean, yeah. uh, I guess you guys want to talk a little bit about Enigma Six and uh, Panda. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I guess start with like Panda. It's I don't know what to expect. Like neither me, at, I. At, at Atlanta, this was a team who they could have like placed top six, like. Who knows if they don't Dude. lose that five-one lead to Optic on Sunday morning? Uh, or five. They should have. They should have easily got top six at Atlanta. Yeah, like I, I think it's another one of those things where just play style caught people off guard. Their, their search is super strong, and and they just seem when we watch like on the analysis desk, like they're just confident. Like somebody calls and they just go. Yeah, I no love fear, it. Yeah, don't they fly. care. I'm gonna shoot you. I'm gonna run at you like as like uh, as a pack. Like they don't care at all, um, and, and that's weird because usually what, when you'll see a team come in a pool play, especially a team like like Panda, usually sort of falter. They they get a little nervous. Like these guys are just like, what do we have to lose? Let's just run at them. Well, and the ball is in the, these guys' court. They're in the ninth spot right now. These every single probably map of pool play is the most important for these guys. They're, they're the ones in the driver's seat, right? So I expect them to come out full force on Friday because they, they have everything to lose right now. These other teams are comfortable in their spots. They're fine for pro league, all that type of stuff. 
Panda is the one team in this group that needs to make a jump. Yeah, and I mean, I mean Panda. He's, he's Panda had a good like Atlanta. That. They did not have a good uh, Vegas. So they didn't have a good Vegas. They didn't have a good ESWC. They had yeah, seventeen yeah. through twenty at Vegas. Not good. Wonder was that the same roster? Yeah, I'm looking at it now. Uh, Priest, Fastball, Profici, and Pemby. So you like roster. to see that. So they they they're getting better. Uh, but Benny, Benny Six, I mean, I don't know what to think of this roster either. <laughs> Me either. I have no idea. Um, uh, I thought they were going to make it out of groups in uh, Atlanta. Yeah, this this is the pool I think can get really weird really fast. Like, because you saw Rise come out super slow at, at Atlanta. Like, in, and that's what's that's where, like, 3G took second. So I, I could see that, like, happening again. Uh, just somebody in this group starting slow and either panda or, or e6 like escaping what second uh, e6 could get top four or top 12 or top yep. 24 i yeah. i have no idea where to put these guys and i i hate yeah, it right. but they're very good online they are very good online players so like is that i hope it transitions over and they have a, a really good event at dallas but uh, <laughs> it's this uh, is a tough to call, Panda but I don't did think have that a roster change by the way. Panda did okay. uh they swapped out Priesta for Profit. Okay. In between those events. So they did make a change. Priest is now on Gozu Crew. I don't Worked think there's a blue. I don't think there's a blue. I think it's just Gozu Crew now. Yeah. Um I guess we could do predictions for this pool. Uh, I already kind of spoiled Fudge. mine. I, I had uh I had Splice and Rise Nation. I think Splice takes first in the group. Okay. Uh, same as Matt. Exact same. I think Splice, going into this event on paper, are the best team in Europe, uh, which you'd expect from that combination of players. And it's just it's up to them to deliver, I guess. But I say I say that yeah, this is the one group that if I'm most confident that a European team's going to succeed at Splice. Same. Um, Rise, I think Matty brought up a nice statistic. They've obviously beat Enigma 6, like, what, two or three times at the past two events? Twice, yeah. So naturally, you'd, you'd expect them to kind of to take top two. I mean, I, I, I just couldn't see Rise not making it out in the top two. So for that reason, those two. Um, but again, th th this isn't... To discredit the others because i think e6 specifically if they get going they're more than capable of making a run so it's not to say that these teams that i'm putting in the top two are necessarily going to be the ones at the end of the event placing better it's just in that specific scenario i think i think those are the ones making out and this is one uh this is one of the weird scenarios otter scenarios where third in this group is huge between Panda and Enigma 6. Yeah, it is. Enigma 6 is sitting in 7th. Panda is sitting in ninth. It's a 12,000 pro point difference. Like, that is the difference between, what, one full round ahead in losers, Joe? And what if one finishes 3rd and one finishes 5th? Right, the yeah. Team. That's, yeah. Two, that's two rounds. So, yeah, I mean, that's... Ah, oh, man. Especially with the possibility of which open bracket teams get placed where. Like, getting 3rd... Or even maybe fourth in the group, like that, that could possibly make you yeah, pro league or not. Depending on other pools, like if yeah. someone chokes, like uh, I don't know, man. Uh, for me, like I'm gonna go, you know, rise and splice, but I can see it being, I can see E6 also getting out. I don't know if I can see Panda getting out of this pool, um, but I, I, I can see E6 slipping in there, just depending on how hot they come out on friday because that's the thing is like e6 and panda sort of have that chip on their shoulder where we want to secure pro league so friday's huge for us yeah definitely true more to play for with those two teams but i'm still going with rise number one splice number two however i love when these god squatty teams type form i uh, i hope splice just dominates everyone it'd be a f fun to see but uh, just logically I I'm, I'm sticking with rise number one all right, so now that we've gone through all of the pools, I want to get a top four from everybody here. Whew. Damn. 
At can we can we go through the bracket? Dallas. Let's just use your predictions. You just want to get through them. Uh, yes. Give me one second. Um, I just gotta change some things around. We'll do this super quick. Uh, is that the craziest one. thing to me? Is this bracket? It can be insane. Like, it's. Let me just make sure I have all the teams. That I mean, that's one thing I'll say. Like. Both for Europe and internationally, just the pills in general. This seems to be perhaps the even the most even distribution of talent or distribution of teams I've probably ever seen. As in, I don't think there's usually at events. No offense intended, but there might be one or two teams who everybody knows going into the event are incapable of, you know, pulling off results okay. in their respective group. Whereas in these pools, I can see. Just about every team at least managing to get a result against each other. So my uh, my makeshift bracket here. Let me put a, a line here so I can see top and bottom. Uh, the top side of my bracket would be Optic versus LG and Cloud9 versus Splice. Damn. Bottom side of it would be NV Phase E United Rise. Yeah. Those are damn good games so for you, round so one. You, oh wait, you've, yeah, hold on. You've got FaZe coming up against Envy and Optic coming up against LG in round one. In round one. Jesus. Yeah, uh, that's, that's how they nuts. work out. Yeah, it's it. No matter of that, because A and C play each other, it right. could be Optic phase. It could be LG. It could be yeah, any combination. We're just going off of my predictions. Oh, okay. That's rough. Yep. Um, Jeez. Thing is, is. That, that's sort of where, so we'll just start with Optic Luminosity. Um, that That's the one round where Optics can be vulnerable. Uh, I, I, I'm i still going to lean Optic just because of how dominant they've been, especially SWC, like, they just looked really good. But Luminosity with their full roster, I I could see it going that way if they have a, you know, a, a good day. That's but, a very tough you know. opponent round one. <laughs> yeah. Tough opponent, LG could catch them early in the day, possibly, or I guess it would be probably later at night for the round one games. Yeah, so it all sure. depends on what the waiting times is. It's possible. But what team looks like the complete package? Fair. Uh, we all know the answer. It's Optic. Uh, Cloud, Swan, who would you take in that? Optic or Lu Luminosity? Uh, I, I don't think Optic are going to lose a game in bracket play in the entire event, yeah. to be honest. Oh, okay. I'd, I'd have to go with them. Uh, C9 versus Splice. It's a toss-up. Yeah. I, I mean, if that's your, your matchup, I'm going Splice. I don't Splice, know. 100%. Don't Cloud9 Cloud looks weak. They're very shaky. They had a good online performance, but what do you really take from that? Splice just form. They're going to be in the honeymoon stage and all that crap, all the hypes around them. They're the players that should step up. Splice for sure. Swan? Uh, yeah, Splice again, definitely. Yeah, exactly the same as... Who else could that end up being? Like infused? Uh, what about Splice and Fused? Like, that what, could what be uh, like Splice and Fused. It could be uh, Splice e United if e United got second. Yeah. I uh, think Splice and Fused would be interesting just purely because, as we said earlier, Infused have had reasonable success against European teams at international events. So well, it'd be interesting if they matched up against them. Again. And also, also mind you, I have Splice winning the group. So if Splice were to get second and United gets first, they would play United round one. Providing yeah. United got first in that group. Yeah. But, um, but uh, right. if this is the bracket, I, I guess Splice. Yep. Yeah. If this is it, if this is like my predictions were right, this is what it would be. Uh, Envy phase. Roll the dice. <laughs> Honestly, no that idea. Is, that yeah, is one, like, fail. whoever looks better 30 minutes before. Like, I mean, yeah. as crazy as that sounds, like. Yep. Yeah, I think you just, with this, I, I, I'll, I'll go Envy. Uh, uh, really? Yeah. God, I, I, I think there's a lot of pressure on Envy to, to do well. It's, it's time for them to either... You know, get top three in an event, or there's going to be a lot of pressure on them. There's sort of that champ's curse, you know? It real. I'm going to say phase in that one. I just think they've been t too good against everybody but Optic. 
and that's definitely it's a I, don't, I don't i don't know, know I, but it's I'm, I'm usually so game. decisive when it comes to this yeah. crap i'm go, i'm going phase as well couldn't tell you why <laughs> i'm picking face swan uh, uh, <laughs> yeah i i despise these this sort of stuff and i'm the opposite <laughs> of tyler i'm completely indecisive but i, I think phase as well to be honest I, like i these round ones, I completely judge my call off of how they looked on Friday and like maybe yeah. earlier Saturday. So it's like so tough to call like in this scenario. I guess I would take phase though. Like if I was to say now, I'd say just the event itself is going to be an optic and phase final. But I don't know. It's you know anything can happen. Well, hold on. Then we got E United against Rise Nation. The other bottom Shh. side. Uh, Roll the dice again, dude. <laughs> dude. Yeah. It's like I want to say United, but like what happens if I they... do too. They could totally flop again. Like I, now I, I, this I, is yeah. we're so, so unsure on United now after how good they looked at Atlanta. Now we're like, man. So this know. is a uh, this is also providing that uh United gets first. If United yeah, were right. to get second and Rise Nation uh second as well. Then you would actually see uh, this be Cloud Nine. Yeah, I I think if United gets first, I I think they win. Um, I I think they'll just be comfortable. It is it's almost the same as Rise. Like how like which Rise is this? Uh, you know which Faceno and, and Aqua are gonna show up. Uh, but I, I'll I'll go ahead and choose a United. I'm picking a United as well. I I feel like they have. Well, considering they play as well as they did at Atlanta, or somewhat to that level, the slaying power and the overall their payload ability usage is really was really good as well. So I, I guess I'll pick a United. It's tough. Swan, United, yeah, United as well for me, and I think that's just because I think if anything, ESWC was just a complete anomaly, and that for a lot of the guys, I think it was like what it was their first international event was it traveling yes. overseas. Yeah. So I don't, you can't really, like, even, you know, you can't really take, even though they won the event before, a, a week before, you can't really take anything away from SWC. I just think it was a complete anomaly, and it isn't reflective whatsoever on their capability as a team, whereas Atlanta, yeah, I, I, they, they showed just how good they actually are, and if they can even come close to that level, then I'd see them taking that one. I, I agree, I don't. I, I've said it a few times when we're doing the Facebook Live and stuff, like, they were so good at Atlanta, I don't completely write off the SWC, but you can understand why. I mean, it's oh, would I? I, 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 I not, I'd, yeah. Yeah, I think I think their performance at Atlanta just eclipses the SWC. It has to. It, yeah. Just yeah, just based on that fact, you know, it's a completely different environment to get accustomed to. It's your first time abroad, whatever. Whereas Atlanta, on an even playing field, you saw just how good they actually were. And and again, I I think if they do get first, like I I just think their confidence will, will yeah. be super high. I mean, these guys, I, I, you could say the same thing for Rise. Like they they want an event. Um, they they sort of know what it takes. So uh, yeah, definitely United. All right, and then we would move on to semifinals. So your top half semifinal would be Optic Gaming against Splice. This would be just NA powerhouse EU powerhouse. This would be just a contest to see you could pick up any more more kills, I mean. Yeah, completely. Mm. Dwan, how do you I, think this place's roster search and destroy is going to be? <sighs> uh, it, I mean, it's obvious that they're primarily... Yeah, yeah like, I mean, they're primarily <laughs> respawn focused, though. I think everyone knows yeah. that, just looking at the team. Um, I don't know, to be honest. I don't... I, I wouldn't even. I, I wouldn't. I think it'd be an insult for me to even try to delve into it because I don't know how good the previous team were at Search and Destroy. I can't really remember yeah. if they were. I, I think. I, yeah, I think they were all right. I'm not even sure. Um, I don't know. I know, but the the only safe bet is that at some point I think they're going to rely on the respawns to get them through, and they're going to rely on just sheer kills. I, 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 I mean. Just because you said that, I'm going to go off to gaming because that's hard to do to rely on respawns. Or uh, Splice actually won 50% of their respawns at Atlanta. Uh, Mad Cat led the team with a 1.23 SD KD. 
You, you mean they won 50% of searches? Search and choice, yeah. Sorry. Okay. So that's uh, that's where they were at uh, Atlanta. What was the map split? Um, okay. And all of their S&D wins came on Scorch and Throwback. So they didn't win a Retaliation. They didn't win a Crusher. Uh, Don't know how many times uh, they played it, but... I'd go Optic in that one. Um, just firstly, because, I mean, statistically, I might be completely off. But I'm pretty sure that they have... Just in general, a good record against European teams. Oh, yeah. Um, whether it's because... I, I, I guess, yeah, but it just yeah, seems as though whenever there's yeah. a European team, that could, even whatever team, formative, whatever superstars, European team, and everyone thinks, oh, yeah, we might have a chance against Optic. Like us on uh, Black Ops 3, we just got absolutely decimated by them. Um, in bracket play, so I, I don't know what it is, whether it's like the, the play styles matching up, but I, I think Optic will take it. And secondly, because... Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, because Splice have obviously made a recent roster change. I don't know how much that's going to affect their S&D. I don't know if Trey's just going to fit nicely in there or whether they've had to adapt some things, but I'd go Optic with that one. I think it'll catch Optic's uh, surprisingly off guard like how good these guys are going to be. Like I think this is a definitely a series where Krim and Karma have to be playing how they have been recently, like above 1.0 really contributing on all fronts but it, it, it's got to be optic you got to pick them yeah i think uh, you'd kind of have to go optic in this one uh I mean, if it, yeah sorry man, i was just gonna say if oh, it was yeah. anyone else at the event i'd i'd put more of an emphasis on splice but just because i think optic are gonna absolutely Same. steamroll it right like you can't really bet against them at this point and then uh your bottom side semi-final would be phase clan versus e united uh these two teams played in Atlanta. Was it? A, I believe it was a first round matchup, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, it had to have been. I want to say second, second. matchup because uh, yeah. yeah, there was they were both number one seeds coming out, so it had to be a second round matchup in Atlanta. And United won three two, I believe. Yeah, it, this was the this was the game where Gunless had the crazy it's, play with camo on precinct uplink. It? It was a pre yes. dumpling. They won game yeah. three. Yes. I believe United won a game five, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it was on Crusher, yeah, if I remember yeah. correctly. I, I'm going to get FaZe. I, I, I think FaZe wins this time. It's so hard to pick against. Like, I would pick FaZe looking, oh, at their pre look, looking at the previous matchups. If FaZe beats Envy, I feel like they're going to be on a roll, therefore beat United. In this bracket scenario. The big thing is, is the winner's round two, the, I, this could be important to some of you guys' prediction, could not be. Winner's round two is that first match of the day on Sunday. So, Oh, yeah, that's true. If you feel like that's going to affect players at all, that, that, that'll that help your prediction, but I, I, I'm still going to stick with FaZe. Yeah, we're still going FaZe as well. Shit, man, nobody gave any United some love? I'm trying to find the Atlanta score. Like the actual. Three, two, United. Ah, oh, do you know which games they won? They, I know uh, they won the uplink. They had to have won the last S and D. Did they? I think they probably won the first hard point. They probably won hard point, uplink, and search. They probably took one of each. Probably yeah. That's what I would guess. Is there a reverse sweep? Why do I feel like it was a worse? No, they reverse sweep splice. In round one. Oh. Maybe he says phase one both hard point. Oh, really? So phase one both hard points. So that means just the searches in the uplink. Oh, they lost. Yeah, they got destroyed first. Hard. I don't know, dude. Anyways, I'm uh, going phase. <laughs> I guess I would go phase. I don't feel great about it. Just because, like, I don't know. I feel like if a United gets there... They're going to be playing pretty hot. They're going to be pretty confident. Th that would leave us with an optic phase winner final. Uh, to remind you guys of the stats since Advanced Warfare, optic has not lost a winner final. Phase does not beat optic the last two times. It's been brutal, to be to be honest. If they get there, though... 
They got a chance. If they get there, yeah, they got a I, chance. I, like, I think it could be a close series for sure. Uh, I I don't know, man. It's it's tough. It's on Clay's back in that particular yeah. series. Th that series is a hundred percent. Yeah, no, that that it is. No, that series is like if Clay that's plays not, good. That's who knows? That's not speaking to Clay's level of play. It's speaking to for like Clay needs to somehow try and neutralize formal on the stat category as much as possible. If those and guys, if those guys, one player that could do it, it's Clay. If Clay, that's how it was in AW, Clay, that's how if Clay it evens that battle out to a one to one. This is a series phase can win. Exactly. V very convincingly. But was it we... ever like a one to one? Like in AW, wasn't it? it? Was it ever like a one to one? Wasn't it just sort of like both of them shitty on each other's teams and then like attach? Like it came down. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, you're definitely right. I'm just saying yeah. like we've seen it from formal in game. Have we seen it from Clay? No. You have a Clay that like, Clay at the beginning of Advanced Warfare wasn't great. Didn't Joe drop them or traded them to denial or whatever the hell happened? But like that's yeah, that's true. Then look what happened, yep. Joe. You would have been a COD champion. It's true. Too bad we just suck. <laughs> <laughs> Swan, what are your thoughts? Uh, I think another interesting point to make, and you might touch on it briefly earlier, is the fact that Formal's now assuming more of a leadership role as well. So again, you can draw comparisons with him and Clay. Given the fact that previously, you know, it, it's been, I guess, mostly Krim taking up the mantle, whereas now Formal's starting to dictate things a bit more. So the, it's going to be interesting to see that kind of clash of heads between him and Clay, both being the respective leaders of each team. I mean, OG's looked great with Formal kind of making those adjustments. Well, it's just a thing that, like, we sort of talked about, like, we talked about a bunch in this show. It, like, maybe Krim's just more comfortable. Like, he seems to have more of an impact now, and maybe that j is just due to, to formal taking a leadership role, and Krim's just saying, I I'm going to just shoot people again, and I, I think that's sort of helped. Because there's there's times, and I, and I think it's what Clay could be going through right now, is there's times when you're, like, the vocal leader or the leader on your team, you're just trying to do too much, and that affects your own performance. I mean, you see it in every single game. Like, I, I just think about, like, Counter-Strike. Like, people always give, like, in-game leaders, like, a ton of crap, but they always get the, the sort of final placements. Um, so maybe that's what was needed, was just a, sort of a step back for Krim, so he could just rely on himself some more. And maybe that's what Clay needs. Yeah. I mean, maybe if they just kind of let Clay. If I'm Clay, I just kind of grab the MV4 and I just focus on, like, controlling spawns, getting to my positions on time, and just picking up those kills against whether it's Karmon rotation or formal. Like, if they do that, they have a very good chance in this series. Clay needs to, Clay needs to stat whore versus optic gaming. There you go. That's it. Yep. I don't want him to focus on anything else. That's all Teep did his entire career. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> Oh no! I, I cannot. My imagine career, that. my career, my career, Katie was like point nine five. It's pretty good. I won't, I'll, I'll take. It's I got higher. Carried. It's higher than my uh, cut. Actually, no, it's not higher than my <laughs> cut champs, Katie. But I padded yeah, it. Yeah, you're like you're like a one point oh. I padded it against Mind Freak. It's All right, let's do our team. top fours. Right, just oh, yeah, do so, our top guys. So just letting you know. Okay, so game one was two fifty to eighty. For phase in the United at Atlanta, so yeah, oh. they won both searches and up like. <laughs> okay. All right, so my top four, I'll take Optic, Phase, E United, and Splice. Is it me next? Th those are my top four. It's Swan. Well, whenever you uh, play it, it's you, Swan. My mine's the exact same, but I. Mm. I, I want to say either Envy or Splice in there, but I'll go with the exact same one as yours. You're a smart man. I'm gonna go. Oh, here we go. Optic, okay. Phase, Envy, Luminosity. Ooh. I like. Ooh, I like that. That's spicy. Optic, Phase, Envy. I named my six. <laughs> <laughs> Optic no. Nation. Oh, 
Optic Nation. <laughs> yes. Who's, uh, who's my, bring it back. <laughs> who's my fourth team? That's Damon, Damon, Damon with themes. the courage. Dude, do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, dude, watching, watching you I'll guys laugh. play. Oh, man. Uh, that was not fun at all. Oh, yeah, at least it was understandable. It was actually watch. hilarious. It was a lot dude, of fun. Dude, it was, it was amazing to cast. It was I would like, just watch oh, at home. Like, there's, there's, <laughs> there's Karma on the turret on Biolab. <laughs> don't know, don't know what I'll take a United for <laughs> All right, so what do you got? Optic, Optic. phase NV United for fourth. NV United. Um, so the only one that's got something really different is Joe. Yeah. I don't even remember Joe's four team. It was so crazy. It was, it was Opti Phase Envy Luminosity. Envy Luminosity. That yeah. crazy. Optic it's not that out of the box. Luminosity, Envy. No, that's crazy, dude. It's crazy. This was fun. Swanee, I'm just going to move you to my house. Please do, Matt. Dude, I'm down. That, Swan dude, loves like, America. Dude. Yeah, it's pretty good. He loves America. Dude, I would... Fund, I don't know how I would fund it, a Swanee Takes on America YouTube series where you just came to America and we just followed you around. Just travel the country with no one understanding me. <laughs> Excuse me, mate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, soon. Soon. Today was fun. Any closing thoughts from any of you guys? Swanee, uh, tell, tell me your best story teaming with Teep before we go. Oh, I mean, it's... <laughs> What was the Every... best day of practice you had with Optic Nation? There was one where I Teague recorded it and I just roared. I, dude, I, was, <laughs> I literally am going to YouTube right now. To find... It's like a bullshitted by someone. I can't remember who it was, but I just screamed. That I was pretty entertaining. It. Watch this in the Skype call. Oh, let's see. <laughs> Should we do some, some last? Matt, bring it, bring it up on the stream real quick. Deb, that'll be our closing thoughts. Who's he playing? Oh, God, it's freaking out. I think it might have been nameless. I'm not sure. No, I think it is nameless. Oh, it's is it against my team? Maybe. Oh god, is now, it you? now now everybody's freaking out here. Oh, it is. Yeah. But just That's... know that it was bullshit for my point of view. Tyler, what's the video called? Ra <laughs> Swanee is an angry lad and roars. I linked it in Skype. Yeah, I I know, it's just freaking out now. Okay. What is happening in this stream? I don't know. I, I clicked on the link and then this just happened. I'm All getting right, a seizure so. from the screen. Dude, what is going I don't on? know. I don't know. Turn it off. All right. Yeah, this is how we're going to end it. Production <laughs> value at its finest. Ah, oh, here we go. I got the video. Up. What the, the audio. Did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's about Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I also gotta take questions. Oh man. Yeah, I know. Golden Boy's telling me to change scenes. I don't have another scene, Golden Boy. Are you sure you got it figured out? Dude. No, I'll just I swear to god. All you see on your guys' webcams is just my crosshair. And it looks amazing. And you're all frozen. <laughs> my crosshair. But, anyway! <laughs> We're going to sleep. We love you. We're out. Goodbye. Swanee. Thanks for watching, guys. Swanee, go to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Later, guys. Later.